What's going on guys? So today I'm out here at Knapp Chevrolet in Houston, Texas. And we're taking a look at this brand new Chevy Silverado 5500 HD Duramax medium duty truck. This thing is a monster. I got my F450 sitting back there and if I parked them side by side, you would just see how much bigger this truck looks overall than my F450. Now it definitely has a taller hood profile to it and it has a much larger grille opening up front this thing is just a really, really cool truck. Now, some of you may know that I ran a poll on my channel not too long ago inquiring on if this is a truck that you might wanna see on my channel. And I compared it versus like a Ford F650 or a Ram 5500. Now, I said the Ford F650 because that's where you get into their larger style pickup truck where it moves away from that traditional pickup truck look that they have. With Ram, they really don't have that option. So the 5500 is gonna be their largest medium duty pickup truck offering. And that's gonna be really what competes in this space as well. But overall, if you're looking for kind of an apples to apples, it'd be the Silverado 5500 HD versus the Ford F550 cabin chassis, which is this version of my truck, not the pickup truck version that you see there. That's still a class three vehicle, not a medium duty vehicle. And the Ram 5500 chassis cab, because that's the only configuration you can get it in. Now, this one has a CM hauler bed that's already been installed on the back of it. And this thing is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, if I were to get a truck, or at least a medium duty truck, this would definitely be a contender on the list, right? A lot of cool things about this truck, but this entire video is gonna be to talk about why a truck like this might be a great option and why it may not be such a great option. And you're actually gonna understand why you don't see quite as many of these as haulers as you might expect. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so I actually called this dealership and I specifically wanted to buy either this truck or something similar to it. I think this is a two wheel drive truck and they make a four wheel drive version of this as well. And I was looking for either the 4500, 5500 or 6500 version of this truck because quite frankly, I thought about getting a Ram. The problem is, is it's a very common truck and I've featured a lot of Ram 4500, 5500 series trucks on my channel before. And I've done reviews, I've driven a lot of them. And in my opinion, it's not too far removed from a Ram 3500 dually. Yes, you get the wide track front end on it, which is really nice. But the fact is though, it's not significantly different from a 3500 dually. And that being said, when you look at the Chevy medium duty trucks, this is significantly different than almost any other Chevy product, even if you're comparing it to like a Chevy 3500 HD truck. Now, the biggest difference of course, is the entire frame, chassis, engine platform. The engine itself is pretty much the same. It is a slightly detuned version of the engine because it's dynoed at the chassis versus the engine. So there are going to be some differences there. And how you access the engine is also different. So you flip the hood this way and you get really, really great access into the engine compartment. I believe you can cut the wheels over like 45 degrees. So you get phenomenal turning radius with a truck like this. So there are a lot of good aspects to this truck in that sense. Plus you can get it and a pretty nice trim. So you have, you know, cloth seats, but you're gonna have it with the larger display up front. You can get navigation on the truck. You can have a lot of nice luxury features with a truck like this, backup camera, which is also really nice. And that's one of the reasons why I actually wanted to buy one of these. So my plan was to get one. And what makes it even more appealing is that they're actually really affordable. A truck like this as configured is probably $55,000, right? If you try to get a, F450 or if you try to get a Chevy 3500 dually, you can push all the way up to the $90,000 range. But a truck like this is going to be significantly less expensive because they wanted to be very, very aggressive in terms of how they priced these trucks. All that being said, why don't you see a ton of these on the road hauling big fifth wheels around? I know there are a few companies out there that will convert these into a hauler style truck. You have a hauler bed here, but that is not really the design application for this truck. Okay guys, so with me, I actually have Greg. Greg, do you wanna introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Greg Watson. I'm the Fleet and Commercial Manager at Knapp Chevrolet. I've been with the Knapps for 24 years. Um, fleet and Commercial and Medium Duty is what we do. Um, number two in Texas. Okay, so 
that was honestly a plug that was well deserved and I'll explain why. I actually called this dealership, again, looking to buy the four wheel drive version of this truck, which we'll take a look at here in a second. And I was transferred to this gentleman and he, I basically told him, I said, you guys have a lot of these medium duty Chevys on your lot and I'm interested in buying one for my channel. I ran a poll, everyone said you should get one. So I honestly came to buy one. And he asked me one question that stopped the whole conversation. What was that question he asked me? What is this vehicle gonna be doing for you? What am I using it for? And I told him, well, I'm actually gonna use it to haul an RV. And then you asked me how much the RV weighed. So I told you 17,500 pound is the GVWR, the rating on that specific RV. Right. And he goes, you can't do it. So I'm thinking in my mind, what in the world's going on? I honestly just thought because this is a 5500 HD and because it's a medium duty truck and it looks badass, that I would be able to haul my fifth wheel with this. And he basically says you can from a weight perspective, a pin weight perspective, you can haul the, the weight pressing down on it. But because the GCWR on this truck is limited to 30,000 pounds or 20, anywhere, you, you basically give me a range, anywhere between 20 yeah, to 30,000. 5,500 uh, range between 26 and 30,000 pounds gross combined weight rating. Yep. And then we have to factor in the weight of the vehicle. Um, even more important, Texas, like you and I've discussed, is the capability of your trailer and the capability of this truck, and that's what TxDOT looks at. Yep, so what he was basically pointing out to me is that the gross combined weight rating of this truck isn't necessarily designed for towing extremely heavy weight, it's designed for carrying extremely heavy weight. Right. So a great application for this truck, and we'll show you one here in a little bit, is throwing a dump bed on the back or an ambulance body on the back or a bucket lift or you know all sorts of different vocational bodies on the back or even something like this because let's say you're a landscape company and you're hauling mulch all day or you're hauling uh, fertilizer stuff like that or even a small tractor something that you can fit on here this can handle the payload no problem the challenge is because the gross combined weight rating of this plus whatever you would tow behind you in a fifth wheel perspective is likely to exceed 26,000 or 30,000 pounds that's where the limitation is. Correct. And that's why we stopped the conversation. Yeah, that's why we stopped the conversation, and that's why I'm not driving away with this bad boy. <laughs> I really like it. I mean, these trucks are awesome. Actually, let's open this truck up real quick and take a closer look inside of it so you can see what it's all about. The nice thing about this truck is it's very familiar. Um, when you get inside a medium-duty Silverado, the interior reminds you of a 2500 HD or a 3500 HD. So we didn't re this vehicle did not reinvent the wheel on the interior. So. Uh, and it now comes standard with the seven inch display up front, right? Yeah. So you get the nice display up front. And I, I, I had a chance to spend some time in one of these at the Tr Detroit Auto Show when they revealed it. And that's the first thing I noticed is you get inside of one of these trucks and you feel like you're in a half ton pickup or yep. three quarter ton. Or you, three quarter ton. Yeah, you feel like you're in a regular pickup. They've done a great job. And arguably, I would say this is superior to what Ford puts out from an interior perspective on these medium duty trucks. When you look at like an F5 or an F650 or 750, the inside looks like the previous generation truck from years ago. But on this truck, you have a really, really nice interior to it. And this was one of the reasons why I also wanted to look at one of these trucks over a Ford because I felt the interior was one that you could spend a lot more time in and not feel like you're in a commercial vehicle, not feel like you're in a construction truck. This is just super cool. Mind if I uh, start her up? No problem, here you go. We'll hop into a four wheel drive truck here in a second. There's that Duramax. Check out the back seat area. I mean, as long as you stay within the weight ratings of the truck from a GVWR gross vehicle weight rating and the GCWR gross combined weight rating, then you can tow what you need to tow. You just need to know what your numbers are. That's the key. You need to know what you plan on towing with this specific vehicle. And I wouldn't recommend throwing, you know, a 15, 20, 25, 30,000 pound fifth wheel behind this, even though it could likely tow it. Even though, you know, you probably won't have a, an issue towing it or handling the weight. That's just not what this truck was designed for. This truck is designed for a vocational body on the back of it so you can carry a lot of weight. Greg, yes, sir. one big selling point on this vehicle that I saw is how you can access the engine 
if you need to do service on it. Can oh, we yeah. show that? Okay. I'm going to cut the wheel to the side because I know that's part of it. Okay, so you got these clamps on each side. Very commercial truck-ish in nature, but you're going to see what's oh, cool about this in a second. By the way, just for a quick second, the death tank's over here on this diesel. This was the number one thing when they developed this truck. They went to Hawaii, they went to Alaska, they went to Canada, they went all over America. The number one thing medium duty buyers wanted was the death tank on the other side so you can't make a mistake. Yep, and all of a sudden have a death diesel mixture, right? Correct. This is called a clamshell hood. So it pops back and check that out. You're in the engine. Or the mechanics in the engine if you need some service work on it. That is like super that. cool. I mean look at this. You are all around the engine. Can we go to the other side? Yeah, let's take a look at the other side real quick. Here's my washer fluid. I can check my antifreeze. Um, it's right there filter right there so you're in the engine and there's your lock once you open it and to basically put the hood down you pop this back up so you can correct lower that even this filter you can see the gauge on it i'm in the green yep on this air filter oh yeah pop this just like that because the reason for for that is we don't want the hood to blow down yeah but we're out here in the breeze. We're not in a shop. Yep, and it's windy right now too. We right. probably got 25 mile an hour winds. Last thing you want is this heavy hood falling down on you. Correct, that's the point of that little, that little lock. Let, let, let's talk about some of the things that make this great. Okay, this is the frame right here. This oh, wow. frame goes all the way through the truck. Can you see it? Yep. That's the frame. It's a straight frame too, right? Straight frame. So that frame passes all the way through this truck, okay? These all start out as 6500s, okay? The, what makes them a 45 or a 5500 is the suspension or the axles, okay? So this is a true medium duty vehicle, okay? Uh, we'll get to it, maybe shoot a chassis where we can get to it. We can't see the components underneath here because we have the bed on, but a lot of the components on this, the brakes, The lug nuts, if you look at a oh yeah at the competition, they're much smaller. They're 3,500 size. These are huge. Okay, so the components on this vehicle, this started out as a 6,500 at heart, and it became a 5,500 because of the axles and because of the suspension components. Gotcha. Okay? So another thing I know too is on the two-wheel drive, you can get air ride, can't you, for your, your yes, suspension? Yes, you can get air ride. On four-wheel drive, it's not offered though, not right? Offered. So And that kind of makes sense. So, yeah, you can have air ride suspension. Is air brakes an option on any of these? I don't think they are on these, right? No. Yep. And not that you would really need it for this type of application, to be honest. No. But that's no really cool. Brakes. And, you know, commercial applications. You got an airline right here. Is There's that your airline? jump? No, that's your jump. Okay, so you got a jump block right here in case the battery's dead. Correct. Right. Jump block right there. So very cool. So this has turned out to be a longer video than I thought. So we're gonna make Sorry. this a two-part series. No, it's actually a good thing. So guys, go ahead and take a moment, subscribe to the channel because the next truck you're gonna see is gonna be a four-wheel drive version of one of these. Oh yeah.